read upon that Bretton Woods. That only one currency in the world would have a value which is linked to gold. And all the rest of the paper money would have their value linked to this currency. So if this currency capsize, all fall down, eh? The US dollar. Now you're beginning to see what's coming tomorrow? Hmm? And the US dollar had a value in relation to gold which was fixed at how much? How much? How many dollars to one ounce of gold? See, you're lucky. I don't have time to question you. 35, correct. 35. Then there was a second agreement at Bretton Woods. And that is that only governments, central banks, only they could redeem their U.S. dollars for gold at $35 an ounce. You and I and Tom and Dick and Harry, we don't exist. Now, if we go <laughs> to the U.S. government with our U.S. dollars and say, Uncle Sam, we want the gold, Uncle Sam will say, get lost. The only people who we recognize as existing in the market now are government. This system is haram. It's 99.9% .9 haram. <laughs> well, all of these are just like checks that you cannot cash. The sterling pound, the Trinidad and Tobago dollar, the Bajan dollar, Guyanese dollar, New Zealand money. Pakistani rupee, the Malaysian ringgit. They're just checks which cannot be cashed. All you could do is exchange this check for another check. Aharam. And secondly, only a government can go and cash the US dollar. And then we, not, we notice something happening after Bretton Woods. The value of the U.S. dollar is falling constantly. This is not by accident. Wake up. This is by design. <laughs> In 1971, September, they struck. Britain realized that Uncle Sam had printed too much paper. He didn't have the gold to back up the paper. It's like a bank lending a, a thousand dollars when they only had a hundred. So one Sunday, no, one Friday afternoon probably, Britain came in with about three billion US dollars and said, Uncle Sam, we want the gold. Collusion between the two. Uncle Sam, no, he can't give the gold. Because the minute Uncle Sam starts giving the gold, when Monday morning bank open, guess who in the front of the line? Saudi Arabia, of course. They pump all the oil. And all they get in for the oil is this paper, the green paper, no? the US dollar. So Saudi Arabia will say, well, if Britain knows something, that this paper loses any value when they want the gold, I want the gold too. And then second in the line behind Saudi Arabia will be Kuwait. Huh? A long line. So Uncle Sam knew, game finish. So Mr. Nixon retired to Camp David. They normally do that. And then on Sunday he announced to the world. Islam says, when you give your word, you must keep your word. Pacta sunt servanda. Agreements are made on the basis of honoring your word. But Nixon said, we gave our word <laughs> that we would redeem U.S. dollars for $35 per ounce of gold. But we don't have to keep our word. <laughs> and so he tore up Bretton Woods. And since 1975, 21, 
Even the fig leaf that there was, was removed. The system is completely and totally haram or prohibited. By 1973, when the war took place between the Muslims and the Jews, the October War, by 1973, the value of the U.S. dollar had begun to slip from 35 to 40. Of course, the Wall Street Journal will say, is the price of gold going up? <laughs> huh? The price of gold going up. But you and I, who have a little bit of sense in we head, we know now, is not the price of gold going up, you fool. Is the value of the paper going down hmm? from 35 to 40. But then when the war took place in October of 1973, a man named Faisal, Rahimahullah, King Faisal, organized an Arab oil boycott of the United States. And Wall Street panicked. And guess what happened to the U.S. dollar? It collapsed by 400% overnight. From $40 an ounce of gold to $160 an ounce of gold. Hmm? Like it leaking? Huh? And so we see the vulnerability of this artificial fraudulent system of paper money. And then, in January 1980, after the Iranian Revolution had taken place, and the Soviet Union had responded by invading and occupying Afghanistan to check the revolution from spreading to Afghanistan, Wall Street again panicked. And on the 15th of January 1980, the U.S. dollar collapsed to $850 to one ounce of gold. Demonstrating the extreme vulnerability of this artificial, fraudulent monetary system. Now my grandfather, remember? My grandfather? He left me a hundred gold coins. Good. So some wise smart fellow say, well, he's a baby. Let me take the gold money and convert it into U.S. dollars. I mean to say, man, the U.S. dollar says, in God we trust. So we could trust it. <laughs> so, so they went and they transformed it into U.S. dollars. So they got thirty-five hundred dollars, hmm? three thousand five hundred dollars. So they put it away and they lock it up until I reach the age of twenty-one. When I reach the age of 21 and they give me the money that my grandfather leave for me, and I go in the market to buy the camels, and supply and demand, of course, being constant, guess how many camels I could buy? Can you guess? Only eight. Only eight. Would anyone outside of St. Anne's say that this money is functioning successfully as a store of value? If it was the Trinidad and Tobago dollar, not the U.S. dollar, how many camels would I have been able to buy? Three. And if it was Mr. Chavez's Venezuelan Bolivar, <laughs> how many camels would I have been able to buy? One, let me do it.